Is our school system rooted in a certain psychology? What does modern science know about the brain? What does brain science have to do with teaching? Hey, what's up, nerds? This is the New School Vlog, where I squash weeks of education grad school into short little videos for anyone who cares about the future of our school system. Now, as you can see, this week's episode comes from space, AKA my room, it happened. I came into contact with someone who tested positive for COVID. I wanna keep my roommates safe, so I'm gonna do the thing that CDC says. 14 day quarantine, already on day eight, really getting to know myself in this little space. Quick little tour. Here's my kitchen, here's my office, my couch, here's my living room. Not bad, huh? So I finished my first class mentoring new teachers and in the same week started my new class, EDCI 557, brain science, educational research, and teaching. Well, from management to amygdalas. I am stoked. Like the whole reason I wanted to come to grad school in the first place was to take a brain science class. <laughs> Let me say, this class has a huge syllabus. It's been two weeks. I feel like I've written a book and read 10. But my professor knows my brain better than I do, so I'm gonna trust him. So lots of information framed into three questions. Let's begin. Question one, is our school system rooted in a certain psychology? To discuss this, I'm bringing back the meme. In the past 200 years, psychology has undergone a transition from mentalism to behaviorism. Then, with inspiration from other psychologies around the world, a modern hybrid known as cognitivism was born. Mentalism believes in the, the mind as an actual essence, separate from the brain, but housed there. Mentalism does its best to explain why we're all such perfect little godlike humans, but then an enlightenment. Psychology, having first lost its soul to Darwin, has now lost its mind to Watson. Yeah, that quote was said by John B. Watson about himself. He was the father of behaviorism and wrote the Behaviorist Manifesto, which starts like this. Psychology, as the behaviorist views it, is a purely objective, experimental branch of natural science. Its theoretical goal is the prediction and control of behavior. Introspection forms no essential part of its methods, nor is the scientific value of its data dependent on the readiness with which they lend themselves to interpretation in terms of consciousness. He essentially describes behaviorism as three fundamental shifts to the old way of thinking. Number one, who cares about the consciousness? It's all about behavior. Number two, you can't study internal thoughts, but you can study external actions. And number three, we don't care about understanding the mind, we just wanna control it. He believes that if an idea can't be directly experimented on, then it doesn't belong to psychology. Yeah, yeah, I know, every creative type listening to this is furious right now. Anyway, behaviorism had its day. Dogs were trained to salivate, rats ran mazes, and we even trained a human baby to cry at the sound of clanging steel bars. Huh, who knew? Oh, and uh, one more thing. Behaviorism also became the driving foundation of motivation and discipline in our school system and still mostly is today. Yeah, detention is our electric shock and A pluses are our little treats. The better we perform in the system, the further we get. That's right, students, do your little dance. Okay, so it's easy to make wide staking claims about the faults of our education system, but all hope is not lost. We are modernizing. We are listening to science. Back to the meme. So we see Watson. That's like actually Watson himself holding this baby up to prove that humans at the root of everything are just little bundles of instincts who get conditioned into learning to do more complex things. And the mother, the mentalist here, wants to protect the, the soul and mind of her sweet little precious baby boy. And then there's the baby. Yes, instinctually grabbing on for dear life with one hand. Oh my God, who is this crazy man? But the other hand, reaching out for mom. The baby's symbol of safety. The baby, our representation of a new generation, does act according to instincts. But after experiencing signals and stimulus, patterns and context for some years, the baby will begin to act in uniquely conscious ways well beyond some theory of a basic human brain switchboard. Curiosity, motivation, anxiety, creativity. These traits are not simple brain functions. They manifest from many different brain functions 
dancing together in some complex but beautiful unity. Question two, what does modern science know about the brain? All right, so welcome to your brain. Funny, because you're using your brain to perceive this brain like a little brain mirror. In fact, we'll use our limbic systems to learn about our limbic systems here shortly. So the brain is a modular organic computer connected by neural pathways instead of copper wire, by electrolytes instead of electricity. When we scan the brain under different conditions, we get a good idea of where the most neurons in the brain are activating. After thousands of academic tests, we have a pretty good mapping of the different brain regions and what purposes they serve. Scientists named them fancy names and neuroscience was born. So here's a quick tour of some of the more important regions in your brain and some tangible examples to contextualize it all. So this is your frontal lobe. This is like your command control center, which is like a connection point for many other brain functions for some very complex actions. This is your parietal lobe. It lights up with tactile awareness. Your temporal lobe is excited by emotional expression and symbolic language. Your occipital lobe is your visual processor and onto our limbic system, or our learning center. Inside the limbic system, we have our hippocampus, which helps us store long-term memory in spatial maps. Then you have your amygdala, which is the emotional memories. Your thalamus is your signal processor. It takes signals from the environment and interprets them into things that mean something. Your hypothalamus regulates hormone release, and your reticular formation found inside your brainstem regulates sleep patterns and arousal. All right, so we know fairly well how simple animal brains work. We also know where human brains light up when performing different tasks. And finally, we all have our own brains so we can perform our own little experiments. So what are the implications for teachers? Well, let's hop in a quick time machine back to your days in school. Would you have liked to see math problems that honored all regions of your brain? How do you feel about this middle school where classes are organized according to time period instead of a random subject? And what if school could start later for students with abnormal reticular formations? You know, like what if you could enroll in first period sleeping class or fourth period yoga and meditation? I mean, if school's all about nurturing the brain. And the moral of my last class mentoring new teachers was that leaders and mentors need to express emotional intelligence. Yeah, it's a big claim, but it's not arbitrary. As we can see, memory is inextricably tied to our emotion. And our human students aren't gonna have the capacity to fill their brains if their neurons are all tangled up in negative emotion. Our brains do process in parallel, but they only have so much energy to give. Imagine a school where we have as many mental health counselors as you do teachers, where students are taught to be aware of their behaviors and emotions and mental states just as often as they're taught to solve for X. Perhaps these dream schools are just the next wave of education. Perhaps we begin to actually honor the human brain as our most valuable resource. Or perhaps AI takes over and school becomes irrelevant. I don't know, who knows? Speaking of AI, let's talk more about how our study of the human brain is enabling us to create new brains. Next video. Until then, use your conscious meat machine to keep human being the universe. Thank you.